back. I'm trying to the show attack. Just shut down the internet. Whoa! I'm sorry, I had to. I had to tell everybody that heavy rain is kind of meh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I shut down the studio too. What's up? <laughs> I'll shut you down, America. You have power. Uh, people are like, what? What is he talking about? That's uh. changing it to Maury. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, welcome to Attack of the Show, everybody. TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. Thank you. I'm Kevin Pereira. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Shut it down. On the show today, <laughs> Susan Boyle goes death metal. See the oh, country yeah. songstress unleashed vocal napalm in around the net. Then today's Gadgetron features the new Samson video recorder. It might have the best audio we've ever found on a camera. What? Oh. What? It is a bootlegger's delight. Oh. Plus, we're going to play Modern Warfare 2 with soldiers in Baghdad in a U.S. edition of gaming with the troops. And the guys behind the acclaimed webcomic Penny Arcade will be here to talk about their new book and the upcoming PAX East show. It has been around for over 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. It's a long time on the internet. You know, you know what it's time for? What is it time for? For the top five things in the web. Oh, is this for the part with the net and you would go around it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> For oh. the oh, well, for the, cultural for the <laughs> for all you Brits out there. Oh, the definitive answer to one of life's most eternal questions. Yes, in the epic battle of truck versus pool, who wins? <laughs> One way to do it. I, I actually think that everyone should get rid of old pools with just big ass trucks. That's how you should get rid of everything. Yeah. Everything. I think it's a great plan because uh, if the truck can get rid of that horrific old pea smell that's probably uh, lining that thing, drive it on. <laughs> but if it if it gets old enough, it starts to smell like chicken noodle soup. Yeah, it's there's a there's a certain think vintage, a certain flavor. When the sun hits it, it gives mm -hmm. a nice like herbally taste. Like a fine mm. wine. You you've just never, let it you've go. Never, you've never licked an old truck seat. Come on. Huh? <laughs> Okay. Why it's one of the same. Okay. It's my favorite flavor of water. Why don't you start with pop. being honest with yourself? Can we just move on? Number yeah, we three. can. We can. Uh, well, how about number, number four? four? Let's, Let's yeah. keep it in order today. I don't want to mix it up too much. <laughs> and at number four is the angel voiced queen of front, Miss Susan Boyle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, the silence is deafening and accurate. She shocked the world several years ago when pleasant sounds actually erupted from Boyle's song hole. It was very uh, impressive. <laughs> song hole? It's a musical term for someone like that, right? Is it for someone like what? Damn. Come on. So, wait, a song hole? It's a song hole. Voice cave, a sound Voice thing. I don't know. <laughs> Noise crevasse. <laughs> what do you want from me? Okay. It's all I got. Well, I would like you guys to prepare to be shocked again today because now she's smashed together with the medal of YouTuber Welsh247. Hail Satan! Hail and Satan! Oh. I'm not done. You guys, I thought that was the question response. No, sorry. no, no, no. When I do a hail, you have to wait a beat. Okay, sorry. Because the hail could be longer. Take okay? two, Miss Living. Hail Satan and Susan Boyle. Hail, just roll the no, just roll what? it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, ha.
she bit the head off a bat. Yeah. Oh, he says, totally unrelated to the metal. That's a normal, like, post-show snack, so. Keeps her hair nice and <laughs> high. You keep that, that figure. Mm. Is it time for number three? Yeah, it's time for number three. Why not? Let's do it. Number three. I'm really excited about this. It comes to us from Antiques Roadshow. So, hey, guys. Little... Word to the wise, make sure your pulse is calm right now because we do not want you to have a heart attack from all the uh, excitement. You, you know how I feel about the road show. I love it's it. the best all show. The it's the best the road show. It's antiques. Uh, in, case, in case you haven't been to your grandparents' house lately, um, Antiques Road Show is sort of a long-running PBS show where uh, people bring their old coats or paintings or lamps yes. to professional appraisers in the hopes that they're actually worth some money. It's basically uh, hoarders with a dollar amount. Yeah, but, but very rarely does anyone bring on something that's legitimately terrifying. It's generically a, a pull toy. Right. Cast iron wheels and probably made in Germany. Okay. Probably made around 1895 to 1910. Right. So push him over here. Well, listen to him and you see his mouth my hunch is at auction, this could easily bring 2000 to $2,500. Perfect. He's just a winner. <laughs> I love it because he's like, easily, he's like writing the check. This is how yeah. much it's worth to I'll tell you right it. now, that's, a win but that's at, what it takes to be a winner on the Antiques Roadshow. But at least the guy got some, you know, some money for the pig. Yeah, it's therapy money for his kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for the rolling terror toy, Daddy. Beep, beep, beep. Scar. Um... <laughs> Today's number two commercial. Uh, today's number two item is actually a commercial for. Uh, this is someone called Hawk Panther. Now we're not entirely. No, sure. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's settled in. Something called Hawk Panther. I, I know. I, and you're like, but my, I'm about to say I don't. I don't think that we really quite know what Hawk Panther is. Hawk Panther. Um, he apparently first appeared as a commercial during WWE Raw this week. Mm -hmm. So he might be a new USA Network show or some strange wrestling tie-in. Could be, but we do know this. Hawk Panther is. Definitely a man's man of the highest order. Yeah. Wedding rings are nothing but little circles made of metal. Morals are just handcuffs made of words. Hawk Panthers don't steal because everything already belongs to them. A good tan is like a visual mating call for the Hawk Panther. <laughs> Something tells me that most of that advice won't actually work. <laughs> Just, <you know. laughs> is that something real life experience? <laughs> Hey, news hounds! The best piece of journalism from 2010 is here! Okay, you are about to meet a penis as big as a tree. No, not John Cabot. You're a dick. You're a dick. You're a A story from the CBS Channel 5 News uh, on Phoenix, Arizona's KPHO uh, that will make you say, Oh, Tannenbaum. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is the story of a proud and mighty tree uh, uh, shaped like a ding dong. Uh, <laughs> I certainly didn't even mean to offend any of my neighbors. It's a tree unlike any other. It's no big deal to me. I think people need to have a sense of humor. I think every neighbor should have one of these. You know? <laughs> The bigger the better. Star tells us the 35-foot pine tree behind his house had died and needed to come down. So he asked a buddy to chop it up. As a bonus, the friend left behind a one-of-a-kind tree sculpture in the shape of a male body part that runs with the city of Salinas. I thought he was going to carve something funny. I didn't know that he was going to carve this. The homeowner admits he's a little surprised by all the attention his tree sculpture is getting. But really, how often do you see something like this in your neighbor's backyard? Did he really have to get in there? I have to say... You can see the glorious maple vein. Oh, it's like, dude. I don't need that. 
I, I, I think that we should all move to Phoenix, Arizona, because clearly it's the safest place in the world. If th that's what they're covering on the news. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, you know what? Ten out of ten, shocking footage Penis of a wang tree. stump. Yeah. Everybody, get out there now! We're going to cover before the other news place. I love it's it. ridiculous. But I have to say, um, sad news. Sad news, everybody. The tree has already been cut down. Uh, it was actually, actually, though, it was in a ceremony that was quite. Quite hilarious. I bet. And painful for anyone with a Y chromosome. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully they took it off in little small pieces. Oh, let's chip it away. Why? Why? That is... I made a pony. Mm, cup the roots. <laughs> uh, speaking of penises... Oh, yeah. Jocks are kind of dicks. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to sports! Yeah! Welcome back to another inning of Time to Sports. I'm Kevin Pereira, your ball master. Ball master. Right now, the Olympics are happening halfway across the globe in Canada. And as you know, it's customary for the host nation of the Olympics to invent a new sport. Canada has created ice hockey. From what I can tell, the game is essentially figure skating without the feigned heterosexuality and sparkly gems. However, they have added crude wooden canes, a disc of frozen maple syrup, and netted scoring hampers. Now, as it turns out, Ice Hokey is number three in our Feats of the Week. Feats of the Week. Number three. It was an epic ice showdown between the Canadians of the North and the United States. This play shows three Canadian skaters attempting to merge into a single juggernaut in an attempt to dominate the ice court. But their plans failed as the U.S. puckers were able to put way more syrup discs into those ice hampers, including this match-winning score point. Boom ya! But don't worry, Canadia. I'm sure your free, efficient health care can sew up that bunghole we tore ya. That's a zang. Bung of the zang. Number two. It wasn't just our unemployed ice dancers that were victorious this past week. American foot slider Bode Miller won the golden necklace for being able to slide the fastest and go the closest to those snow spears without crashing his genitals into them. Here's Bode scooting fast and, oh, not crashing his genitals. That's good sliding, Bode. Good sliding. Uncrushed genitals. And just because the world is focused on the Olympics doesn't mean that hooper ball goes away. It just means that nobody watches. So let's double some dribbles and squeak up the hardwood. Dribble, dribble. Number one. At number one, this meeting of extracurricular college clubs pitted the Villanova Feral Cats against the spotted Jungle Kitties of Pittsburgh. Here, Pittsburgh college student number 24 passes to student number five, and then this happened. OMG! Won't you take me to Donkey Town? Donkey Town? Oh, oh, you know what that means. Let's fill the time to sports penalty zone. Time to penalty. Of course, we're talking about putt-putting great Tigger Woods and his shameful apology for playing the back nine with all those ladies. It's a dark day for putt-putt for Tigger, and for all of sports, when a pro athlete can't sleep around without it getting around. If the legendary training film Caddyshack taught us anything, it's that golf is about drinking, partying, and gratuitous sex. For shame, ladies. For shame. Get into the penalty zone. Bezo. And don't come out until you ladies can keep your mouth shut. <laughs> That's it for this week. I'm Kevin Ballmaster Pereira, and I'll be here for you when it's time to sports. They can or not. Could be good. Thanks. So this week on Gadgetron, we've got a camcorder with excellent audio. Oh, great. Now we can hear all the retching on amateur sex tapes. That's cool. <laughs> you want camcorders? What? Well, we've got a camcorder right here. Oh, convenient. <laughs> Now that pocket camcorders are finally starting to record high-quality video, shouldn't they do the same with audio? Well, Samson thinks so, with the Zoom Q3. It's got two built-in condenser mics arranged for the best possible stereo sound, all while recording MPEG-4 video at 30 frames a second. And with the SDHC card slot, it can record up to 16 hours of footage, and all for $250. Okay, so first impression... I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Second impression. I hope it's about the camcorder. It is. Gotta move. Okay, this uh, this thing is huge for a pocket camera. In fact, yeah. I wouldn't really even call it a pocket camera. I'd call it um, 
uh, just leave it at home because you don't really want to take it anywhere with your camera. Ooh, that's, um, it's that's too not as catchy. That is not as catchy. Mm. Requires far more Remember packaging. Remember that show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Long title, but people love it. Get it? Get it? Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. Also, okay. semi-successful show taken. that Point people taken. like. Okay, so this is massive. It's twice as thick as a flip cam. Um, it's about an inch taller. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's obviously due to the con this the condenser, you got a condenser mic, up here, mic up top. Yeah, yeah. But Really? How well? <laughs> Relax. Take a breather. This thing is massive. It's a satchel quarter. You could fit it right in your satchel. Um, here's the thing. At least it's easy to use, right? Recording and playback mimics like uh, the flip in terms of layout. It's familiar to other users of pocket cams. What? Well, you're saying at least it's this. That's what they're meant to be. They're meant to be easy. Right. Well, hey, mission accomplished, guys. Right. Drop a Check. banner. Check. Uh, the screen is a little larger than the flip at 2.4 inches. Why is but, he so surprised? Uh, but what you're seeing there, he's surprised at how easy the camera is to use. Um, it's deceiving, though, because as you can also see on the bottom of the screen, the, the extra screen real estate is being used for audio monitoring, which, again, that's, that's what's king about this player, is the audio. Um, there's a couple settings. You have mic gain right on the side, uh, which is easily accessible. You just slide the little plastic tabs. Um, the problem is that they easily get slid when you put it into your pocket as well. So, again, well, this is the leave-it-at-home camera, you said, so maybe that won't be an issue. But if you are slipping this into your cargo pants, uh, those buttons will get, uh, get knocked around. So most pocket cams like this don't come uh, jam-packed with features. So mm -hmm. you usually see, like, I don't know, something gimmicky like direct YouTube uploading or something <laughs> right. like that. So is right. the Q3 any different? <laughs> no. no. Um, oh, it actually says it, it right has, there. There's a sticker right on it. It says upload Look, right to you YouTube. It's, like, so it's right there. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Here's a feature you can do with anything. So what, fe um, so what, feature, so what feature do they Well, here's the about? thing. Most of the features obviously revolved around audio, since that's what this is focused on. Uh, it gives you options uh, either to record with the video, or you can scrap it, just use it as a straight-up sound recorder. Um, you can also change the mic gain levels. There's a low-cut feature that reduces background noise and low frequencies. Other than that, it comes with a 2-gig SD card and plenty of room for your back. Batteries, huh? Oh, huh? Yeah. Just, you know what I love about, about cameras that have batteries? That it just it tells you when you're done taking footage. Right. You know, they're like, you can't take any more. Boom. You need new, it ain't going to turn on. Yeah. So just, you know you're done. for you. Yeah. So Samson primarily makes audio devices, and mm -hmm. it's apparent that they've brought their love of audio over to the Q3 and uh, their hate for, for everything else. Um, was the condenser <laughs> mic... Uh, come on. It, come on. What, what? This is not a... I know I flip see, cameras. Look, I can, this isn't the, oh, I'm going to the club, let me slide the giant boom mic what into my it? shorts. You tell me what this, <laughs> this is. The, this is the, I'm a roving blogger, and I want to... Uh, my audio interview is very important, y'all. And what? I also want some video to go with it. Are you from the 1920s? Are you from the 1920s? cheerio. Am I going to record it now? Hmm. Okay, well. In the 1920s, so, you never walk away. You always dance away. No. Near do wells? Sorry. That's true. It is okay, true. Okay, so uh, how well do they marry uh, the, their, their awesome audio with the okay, video? Okay, they did all right on the video front. Um, audio, again, sounds great. Plus, you have the option of changing your bit rate and choosing between MP3 or PCM formats. Nerds. Um, video is only 640 by 480 in MPEG 4, which, as you can see here, it's nowhere near the Why quality does everyone look so surprised? of the Flip Mino you know HD. It's there. <laughs> uh, they, they, they're surprised that they fit in oh, wait, I'm going to be surprised. What's going on? What? Hey, I'm Sean. No. Oh, he's not surprised. No. That's he's a guy who knows something. He's like, no, I'm going to ruin your on-air ad lib. I'm shaking my head at you. But look um, how dark that is compared to well, this. That's the thing. In daylight, the camera was okay. Occasionally, it overexposed. You know um, what they should do? They make it even more accessible. Attach a big light on top of it. And then you huh. just throw it in your pocket, and no one will know. Then a giant handle, and let it record to VHS. <laughs> um, in lower light, it's a little bit uh, darker, as you can see, and as you pointed out. Uh, again, they're not going for the most compact camcorder in the world. They're going for a camcorder that has great audio. That it's, was their aim. But I, had to, I do have to say, the best thing about this camera is that it's um, it's so much more expensive than the Flip. It's 250 bucks, which I think something more expensive means that I, I'm is better. Well, listen, if audio is your thing, if it's about recording a lecture or a, a friend's uh, you know band performance or whatnot, then yes, this thing's good for podcasting or, or capturing but stuff like that. But can't you just that. use a recorder and then sketch out what your friends are doing? <laughs> you could. If you're a court reporter, you could just go and... Or, what is a courtroom artist? That's what I'm going to do. Um, but if video is your thing, then probably not. Yeah, you might want to check out. Here's what I would do. The, the Kodak ZI-8. Um, it actually shoots in HD, and it mm. has an external mic hookup. Mm. It's only 180 bucks, mm. and that way you can decide what kind of microphone you want to plug into it uh, as well. So there are cheaper options. Okay. Um, this is nice for all-in-one. So it's just you, too pricey right so now. So what are you giving this one? This one is getting a 3 out of 5. Okay, so that means buy it if you want it. Something... Look, if audio is not important it. to you and you don't want to fumble around with an extra mic, it comes with a 2-gig card. It's got the built-in USB. It's not a bad purchase. Yeah, three and if five. you want your videos to look like you're doing this... <laughs> this is the camera. That's it for Gadgetron. You can't see anything what, on in the dark. What are you talking about? Over there. When, like, when you're, they're walking through the But why would you be doing that? That's how but you watch the video. You want to be, ah, all of a sudden I can't see well.
Remember, for even more of the latest news on computers, tech, and games. Oh, it's 1920s, Olivia! Hey! 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 <laughs> Go to g4tv.com slash the feed. 1920s, Hoss. Hey, go ahead. No, it looks weird. I was still walking out. We're going to send our viewer, Armin, to the 2010 Toy Fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little racist. We're going to check out the new Iron Man Deuce toys and talk to comic superstar Tom McFarlane. Then we go on Game of the Truth and play Modern Warfare 2 with our soldiers at the USO in Baghdad. You can kind of get them out. Then later, the Penny Arcade guys are going to talk about the Pax Video Game Show and the splendid magic of Penny Arcade. Stick around. Kristen Adams, it's Thursday, February 25th, and here are your top stories. The Superman reboot officially has a writer. Today, Variety confirmed that David Goyer, who co-wrote The Dark Knight, will be scripting Superman, The Man of Steel. Latino Review also revealed that Goyer's story involves Lex Luthor and Brainiac. It's not an origin, and it will set up a huge Kryptonian mythology. Goyer will also be working on the third Batman film with Christopher Nolan. So that guy pretty much has the greatest job ever. <laughs> Space may be the final frontier, but that doesn't mean we're going to make the trip. NASA officials were met with some harsh criticism from the Senate yesterday over the space program's proposed budget. NASA Chief Charles Bolden requested a whopping $19 billion to plan and execute not only manned moon missions, but ultimately a manned Mars mission. With last month's cancellation of the Return to the Moon mission and upcoming retirement of the space shuttle this fall, lawmakers accuse NASA of having no clear goal or destination. I've been accused of that since I was like five, so don't worry about it, NASA. <laughs> In fact, one senator quoted baseball legend Yogi Berra saying, you've got to be very careful if you don't know where you're going because you might not get there. <laughs> Looks like NASA's not going to get those space bucks. The iTunes App Store has a new reigning king. Plants vs. Zombies, the quirky tower defense game from PopCap, is now the fastest selling iPhone game of all time. Woo! Really? Yeah. Really? In just nine days since its release, the $2.99 game has been downloaded over 300,000 times, grossing over $1 million so far. In the game, you defend your house from a horde of advancing zombies using a variety of exotic cartoon flora. Plants vs. Zombies has previously been available as a downloadable game on the Mac and PC. I'm Kristen Adams, and you guys have just been fed. Now back to Kevin and Olivia. Oh! That was Vintage Adams. Yeah! Yeah! Vintage Please. Adams. Ah! <laughs> she looks she looks so great we in We are going to run that into the ground by next week in the best way possible. Monocles, top yeah. hats, canes. Oh. You've gone too far already. It's going to be great. Now, many have been conscripted into our viewer army, but we're pretty sure AOTS watcher Michael Franco scored one of the best gigs. Yeah, he actually went to the 2010 Toy Fair in New York to check out the new Iron Man 2 toys and to talk to comic book royalty. It's Mike Frank from New York City. We have the 2010 International Toy Fair. It's close to the public. I got a pass. Let's go inside. So what's your name? Randy Falk, Director of Product Development for NECA. Alright, and then what do we have here? Uh, we have our first line of Jonah Hex figures and collectibles. Um, John Malkovich's Turnbull. On the left, Jonah Hex, Josh Brolin in the center, and then Megan Fox in her thigh-high stockings on the far right there. We're here with Clayton Hodges, and he's going to show us the new Iron Man stuff. The first thing you have to see is the remote control of walking Iron Man. So this is uh, $49.99. It's available in the fall. It powers up with lights and sound, just like from the movie. With the remote control, you can control him walking on any smooth surface. Check it out. And when does this come out? In the fall. Right. So, welcome. You're in the Star Wars section. What makes this lightsaber unique is it gives me the ability to spin the lightsaber just like General Grievous with classic battle sounds as you fight each other. So I'm here with comic book creator, toy creator, sports owner, <laughs> All around nerd god, Todd McCall. The jack of all trades, master of none. What we want to do this year for you guys. We got Halo Reach in May. We have the Prince of Persia. 
What about Spawn? I know there's another movie. This whole thing. How's that going? I'm about eighty percent through the script right now. I get the right person to write. I'm not, I'm not willing to give it away. I just go, you know, I've had this movie in my head for too long. You know, I'll just, I'll just do it myself. Oh, it's hot! Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, Attack the Show. That's it. This has been the 2010 International Toy Fest. Thanks for making me a member of the Video Viewer Army. Mike from New York, signing out. Resistance is pointless. <laughs> Excellent report there, sir. Thank you for that. Um, if you guys want to cover an event for us, go to g4tv.com slash viewer army to enlist. Fall in for Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, you just got drafted to game with the troops. With the internet at our fingertips, the ability to connect our troops with their families is bound by no more than a gaming controller. That's why three years into its mission, Pros vs. G.I. Joes is bringing together celebrities and pro athletes to compete in online games with the military. No matter where the base may be, Pros vs. G.I. Joes continues to bring a piece of home to our real-life heroes on the fighting line. Over at the USO Baghdad Airport and Sather Air Base, our troops have a dedicated gaming center with Xbox 360s, Wi-Fi access, and streaming webcams to connect them with celebrity competitors. Eager to show off their skills, these G.I. Joes are ready to grab their controllers and start playing. And that's why it's time that we go gaming with the troops. All right, let's welcome like the men and women from USO Baghdad Airport and Sather Air Base. They're actually already giving Olivia some fashion yeah. tips. What's up, guys? How are you? Hey. Yeah. So we're actually talking with Airman First Class Wallace Edge. Uh, that is his last name, Edge. Is his last name Edge? Given name. Given name. Now, <laughs> what time is it over there, you guys? Uh, it's about two o'clock in the morning over here. Is it, is it, isn't there supposed to be lights out so you can put soap in the pillow bags or something? Like when? <laughs> when a few good men. Is that what you're? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not a few uh, good not men. Not over here. Uh, Look how good looking everybody is. <laughs> everybody shirts off. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> is that how? I don't play. <laughs> he's like he's showing the nipples. That's gonna excite the ladies. That's good. Very nice. Did you guys? Uh, did you guys actually get President's Day off? Uh, no. No. We don't do too many days off over here. <laughs> what? Where do you What's guys up? go pick up chicks? Oh, 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 we pick them up in America. <laughs> ain't no chicks out here. <laughs> So what, so what are you trolling? Are you trolling MySpace like MySpace back home, and then trying to do web chats like this? Who's you're trolling just MySpace time? ever at all? Actually, I'm trying to make a move in on Octavia. <laughs> no, did you call Olivia? Olivia? <laughs> what is going? Okay, wait. Is that, is that the, that's the evil genius version of Olivia, right? Okay, first of all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Octavia. I'm doing this right. You're going to name. Your sister's name on What name? Who? Where have you ever met an Octavia? Look, he is the edge, man. He's extreme. Don't push him. Do not push him. Okay, I'll go by Octavia. What's up? Just, you just call I'm me sorry, Octavia. Olivia. It's cool. We're going with Octavia. Uh -huh. Edge. All right, so is there anybody out here in the States that you guys want to say hi to besides Octavia? Besides Octavia, yeah. Yeah, first and foremost, Octavia, but uh, I'd like to make a shout out to Olivia. Everybody back at McGuire Air Force Base, that's where we're from. Georgia, Alabama, Ohio, shoot, the whole USA. Yeah. Do you guys want to play games with this club? <laughs> let's, let's play games. Go to your Twitter friends and call them out. No, we, we've actually got all the friendly stuff out of the way. It's actually time to actually, uh, well, kick your asses in Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. So let's get it going. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Tell that of your little kid backstage to get ready to get whooped. Oh. No, no, no. We don't need that. We don't need that. I'm like, if we were playing the Navy, we'd bring in ringers, but we're good. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, what? Uh, okay, well, we've got faces and guitar, four twins. Oh, no, you're so offended. All right, let's do this. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah, let's go. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Let me just get completely schooled and have to eat every word I just said. Uh, all right. I will be uh, playing the guy who dies in about three seconds. <laughs> Where are you guys hiding? Come on, come on out. I'll knife you. Where are you guys? First time. Oh! oh, oh, you, got oh. you both got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I got melee. That's even more embarrassing. I'm going to hide in a in a crate. I'm just going to hang out in a crate. Oh, come oh. back. Oh, yeah, it's 
deal. It's no big deal. Just say hello to the 12 year old backstage, guys. Kevin, are you that, that preteen's like putting bullets in your ass. Oh, did you just kill me? Oh, did I? <laughs> Sorry. Did you? I, well, I saw Octavia and I got confused. I was like, that's clearly not you. No, no trash talk? You guys are just hanging out? I know, you're obviously really quiet. Oh! Oh, no. I couldn't get out of there. Man, they almost got me. I heard that boo. I hear a lot of excuses coming from that, that side of the, uh, the game, but I don't well, you don't hear from this side. <laughs> Yes, and uh, you guys keep keep checking out pros. Come on, keep checking out pros. Oh, you want to go round two? Nice shot. <laughs> He's still playing the game. He could care less about us right now. Man, he's so into it. <laughs> Pro versus GI Joe Check it out for more info on gaming with the troops and streaming live Goodbye. and all that fun stuff. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you joining us. Adios. Edge is still in the game. Bye, Olivia. <laughs> Bye, Olivia. See you guys. It's a hard name, Olivia. <laughs> Stay tuned, Mike and Jerry from Penny Arcade. Yeah! They had a new book, a gaming convention, their own line of cologne. Stick around, there's so much to talk about when we come back. The feed is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit GEICO.com. All right, Penny Arcade is a long-running webcomic that has actually just released its sixth book, The Splendid Magic of Penny Arcade. Joining me now, Mike, Gabe Krahulik, and Jerry Tycho Holkins. Yeah! Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I like you. Do you predate GeoCities and Tripod? <laughs> no. Well, 1998. 1998. That's yeah. incredible. When you the guys internet was still the... forming, cooling. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. magma was coming up. Exactly. Right. You, surform, you, you survived the, the the 2K transition, and you're still around. And and did you know even back then that you were going to be a web comic, let alone that we were everything destined else? for greatness? I, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't have a sense of it until I came here into your lair, actually. Oh, yeah. now, now you realize you've arrived while yeah. you were here. This yeah. is the real deal now. Yeah. Ja Rule said the same thing when he came here. <laughs> no, I've never met Ja Rule. Okay. Um, you, you, this is your sixth book, which is incredible right. to me. The, the the past books have been just collections of the comic strip, right? Right. 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 Um, and and do you include because the the blogs that you guys write i mean i know our audience is very familiar with penny arcade um but for those the, the few that, that maybe have not seen it the blog posts are sort of in, intrinsically linked to the comic it's right. your opinion or, or what's going on in your world that's related to the imagery on the screen right 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 bonus content bonus content so we're, in the previous books you were kind of displaying that now it's the sixth book is about like sort of the rise and the story of penny arcade yeah yeah, yeah i mean we've this is the idea, it's an 11 and a half year anniversary book. The idea was to make a 10 year anniversary book, but we're kind of lazy, so <laughs> we, we didn't get around to it until 11 and a half years. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've sort of done a lot of cool stuff. You know, we have packs, we have Child's Play, um, we have the comic strip, and we thought it'd be cool to make a book that sort of covers all of that. Yeah, before we before we fly this thing completely into the ground, we thought it'd be nice to <laughs> yeah. commemorate it in some way. Yeah. 
Are you in a holding pattern right now? Like where, Any minute. I'm it's, not sure yeah. where we are at in the metaphor at this point. Right, but, but, but the book is a, a detail of all your conquests and the severed heads that you've left in exact. your wake. Pikes. Yeah, well, it, 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 honestly, oh, you put them on you, it you does, mount them. It does actually include a lot of sort of the, the legal trouble we had, like all of the cease and desist stuff we got from Jack Thompson. We have all those letters, and, oh, and a lot of that stuff like is actually collected in this book. What a treasure to get anything from that man, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who do you think you've pissed off the most along the way? Is it is it the gamers when they, you know, because people have a legion to their console, like the console wars are yeah. still alive and well. Do you, do, you, do you tend to piss them off? Is it the Jack Thompsons? Is it the publishers? Who have you upset the most? Uh, I would guess that most, mostly it's probably the publishers. Yeah. I mean, we, we, get, we get mail from people who are angry when we bash Sony or Microsoft, but sure. you can tell when a publisher's mad at you and, and you know, the advertising sort of dries up from that company for a while. <laughs> you can sense it. Yeah. yeah. When you go to the homepage and it's just image missing where right, there should be a exactly. banner ad. Yeah. Oh, I really it's, do love your game. They didn't like the here. last yeah, comic. Yeah. Exactly. You guys are on a a book tour as well? It's true. Like rock stars. What's the webcomic uh, tale like? What are the groupies like? <laughs> they're, they're, well, I they're, actually, they're, they're, I, they're, I they're, twittered to my wife before this to watch the show. So there aren't any girls at any of these. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, 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 the sort of tale that a webcomic artist gets tends to be in a quick time format. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, or furry at a convention. Yeah. yeah. Um, and are you, I mean, what's, what's it like touring as webcomic rock stars then? Do you have a double decker bus? Uh, are you guys in this? Are you guys sharing a Hertz? <laughs> <laughs> like what is, what's, uh, the, what's your life like right now? Really? We share a hotel room and we watch and we watch Judge Jack and Mari. We watch Mark <laughs> all afternoon. There was some confusion about whether this gentleman might have been a lady's father, uh, the baby's father, and it was cleared up though in the end. Okay, yeah. good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad there was yeah. resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you'd be thinking about that for a while. So no, thanks for putting me at ease. Uh, yeah. You've worked so closely together for so many years. Is, has the road brought out things that you didn't even know about each other? Previously, this would be a great time to move to a dramatization. <laughs> we can, like in black and white. Can we get a black and white filter and find uh, out who the baby daddy is? Let's do it. Dumb. Um, have, have you discovered anything? Well, I mean, it's been a long time since we've had to bunk together. Um, but he he does snore. <laughs> he does have sort of a weird. It's, it's like snore? a it's half hiccup, half snore. I don't know I, what it is. I'm asleep when I do it. I, mean, I was I, worried about it, <laughs> honestly. Were you checking for vital signs when you first heard it, or? Well, no. I mean, I couldn't sleep because of it. What and, does it sound? Can you can you? It's like a like. <laughs> yeah. I can't speak to that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not conscious while it's happening. <laughs> well, you get dreams in a show, so that's, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's two for one. Um, and I hear you've been having fun with chat roulette as well. Oh, yeah. We've invented the greatest chat roulette game ever. The greatest chat roulette game ever created. Please. It's called The Game. We call it simply the game. Okay. Um, a bunch of people just lost the other game, by the way. That yeah. You're not supposed to reference. Right. This no, is a different game. What's the chat roulette game? Uh... Oh, oh, they're showing chat roulette. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, um, Let's, it's like yeah, that, so, but no spiders. So instead of my webcam popping up and, and seeing my face, what you see is my Photoshop screen. And I've written, I will draw you. And I've drawn a very nice picture of maybe the last gentleman that I drew. This very nice picture is bait. Recognize yeah, that. Right, okay. And then the person smiles. They sort of lean in. Sometimes they try to pose, right? Because they're about to get drawn. But sure. they don't want to seem like they're posing. No. Oh, it's no, very like, nonchalant. Oh, how clever. Mm -hmm. And then I, I draw a penis. <laughs> Um, in pure chat roulette style. Yeah. And that, that was fun for a while, but then we had to invent the advanced rules. That's right. Where I literally do start to draw them. I get the hair right. The eyes look perfect. They get the big smile. And then their nose is a penis. Right. <laughs> right. Like, it sort of goes the same way. And then where it gets nuts is that Wait, it... Is can it, we, it you, go ahead. Sorry. Not <laughs> testicle. Okay. We, that's, we'll, make sure. Where it gets crazy is that typically at that point... Then a couple penises move in from the sides, oh. like a flanking maneuver. Yeah, wait, yours are animated. No, no, like, I, I draw two on either one on either side. They have yeah. combat advantage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tactical wing right. appearances it's on plus the screen. Plus two. Um, we could go into that later. But no, we, we can't. I, I, I wish we had time to get to PAX and, and Child's Play and everything else. It's a show. We do a show called PAX. Uh, yes, there we go. <laughs> and in fact, uh, well, first I will thank you guys for coming on because it's a pleasure to see you again. It's been years. Thank you, Kevin. Um, but congrats on all the success and all the good that you do for the gaming scene. Uh, and speaking of PAX East. Uh, for those of you who are lucky to actually go, uh, our good friends Adam and Morgan will be there for the X-Play panel on March 28th. So, again, congrats on all the success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good luck with the sixth book. I like the alternate title, by the way. Yes. I love the alternate title. Let's go over to Olivia. Can you guys go back to when you said there's two, but say it again, it's slower. <laughs> there were two penises. Is that what she's talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was it. Talking about, yeah. Oh, that was it. And she finished. Yeah. yeah. It smells like a ramen packet in here. Oh. <laughs> That was hot. <laughs> Still ahead, it's F in Science, and it checks out the Lichtenberg effect, a.k.a. lightning in a box. Right. Yes, stick around.
The workers demand more attack of the show. We'll be right back. So, would you like to feel a little more electricity in the air? Hmm? Yeah. No. Really? <laughs> That's too bad because you're going to get it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, we all wish we were superheroes. Or at least that we had some sort of superpower. Power! Activate! Well, guess what? We do. And it's called the power of science. Today's experiment is the Lichtenberg effect, more commonly known as lightning in a box. Much like a Tesla coil is used to produce high voltage electricity, a Lichtenberg figure is used to trap that voltage in plastic. Whoa! Here's how we can make one of our own. First, we need a clear plastic polymer such as a sheet of plexiglass. Then, using a Van de Graaff generator set to a high voltage, anywhere between billion volts, we inject the plastic with a strong electrical charge. Using an iron nail and a hammer, we create a small groove at the very center of the sheet and pound it. There it is. Within tens of nanoseconds, we've struck a mini lightning bolt into a sheet of plastic. But how does it all work, you ask? Well, allow me to explain. Thanks to German scientist George Christoph Lichtenberg of the late 1700s, the Lichtenberg effect is a physics phenomenon that can be broken down very simply. Essentially, when the electrical charge is sent from the generator to the plexi, tons of tiny electrons become trapped in the plastic and their negative charges begin to merge. This exposes the entire sheet, or box, to a large amount of radiation, which in effect creates more electrons and more negative charges in the same space. Upon impact, the electrons quickly discharge and escape with a brilliant flash of light and a loud bang, similar to light. The end result is an electron tree inside the plastic, which is an engraving of the partial discharges left over from the Lichtenberg effect, much like the patterns left on the skin of an unfortunate victim who's been struck by lightning. But what's interesting is that the same can be done to acrylic boxes. Simply using a higher voltage and stronger impact on the nail, we can apply the same effect to a larger three-dimensional model. That's how engineers create all those electric tree cubes. You know, the ones you see for sale at gift shops or hippie festivals. So the next time you see a lightning storm, you should probably hide, but don't panic, because it's just science. Sir, sir, I did want more electricity, you're right. You're right. Um, before we go, I want to shout out something. I, I did a little moonlighting over at stylet.tv. Um, really? They have a show called Gift Bag Robin Hood, which is oh. awesome. Uh, and while you're there, if you actually enter the bonus code Kevin, that's my name, um, you'll get better odds. It's like 25 extra chances of winning a Grammy gift bag. Uh, it's worth over 3,500 bucks. So give it a try. All right. There you have it. Thanks to our guest today, everybody. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to Mike and Gary for putting arcade. And actually, Chardell. And you